gentlemen, welcome back for another casted series from the Trash Can League. Today is the round three match between Sheckler and Alligator. Game number one will be played on Malaysia, and we're checking in at the moment with Alligator playing as the Russian civilization spawning into the southwestern map in the color blue, with Daddy Sheck playing in his favorite color, the pink, playing as the Dutch, my favorite Civ, into the northeast uh, corner of the map. Now, this is quite a nice map for Dutch, having two Explorer units, the Scout and the Envoy. If we look from uh, Sheckler's point of view, you can see how it's, he's done a very good job of splitting up the scouting patterns, so they're never scouting the same overlapping um, map terrain. They're, they're continuously revealing treasures. More importantly, it's Sheckler wanting to try and get out the water buffalo, but uh, the path the Explorer's taken here from Sheckler, I do have to question it, I think... Uh, the ideal from both players is to make a beeline from to both the corners of the map. Here we do see multiple um, water buffaloes. One, two, there's the third up there. I think there would be one more on the top side. I think, yeah, one's been brought back. But down here, there's another one, uh, two. That's been carried. There's one nearby. So the water buffaloes, they do gather naturally into the corner of the maps. So I think that's where you want to go. Having said that, though, if you kind of play to that strength, you can think about maybe going for some decent treasures mid map, 20 coin, and maybe if you see like a 50 coin for Dutch, that's what, what you want to do. Uh, both players though, top corner of the map, having a bit of a yak wall, fighting over the treasure, and it's, um, yeah, Sh Sheckler's got himself a problem, because he, he's now been trapped, he's trying, he's, he's using the water buffalo to break the snare, and uh, he's actually stolen the yak! <laughs> Alligator getting, uh, basically made, uh, looked a little bit silly there, Sheckler stealing this, and even Alligator saying, nine, you do not steal a water buffalo from me, and uh, yeah, the good bands between his players are starting off strong, uh, who knows, by the end of the third game though, these two players absolutely not enjoying it, and will be at each other's throats. Yeah, so, so I, was, I was mentioned about these uh, smaller treasures. There's a uh, 40 wood behind Sheckler's base. He has scouts that. He doesn't need it just yet. He's left um, 100 wood on the floor. That's absolutely fine because he doesn't need it. Looks like Sheckler's going to age up with a 15 vil age up here uh, with the water buffaloes on the map. I feel that a 14 vil is possible. He's got nine water buffaloes. So actually, um, when I say that, if you've got nine water buffaloes, there is a potential to go 15 vils. Um, that way, it's, it's more. It's more secure for your bank in transition. It's more of a reliable time in your hit. And then you can send uh, 700 wood, probably into 600 wood, and get that livestock market. Livestock, not livestock market. Ugh. Sorry. I need to throw up a little bit. I've just said something related to Africa. What? Livestock pen from the Europeans. Get that on the 600 wood, uh, just to get these guys fattened up. And that should uh, be able to get a couple of these water buffaloes, an extra 100 food, maybe 150, help your transition to the Fortress Age. But when you do have them fully fattened in the Fortress Age, that's just going to help you so much. And in this matchup in particular versus the Russians, you, you have to think that mass hussar production here from Dutch is the way to go versus uh, Russians. I've, I've had good success going hussars and Reuter versus Russia. And... Um, I think the onus is on Alligator to see how he wants to play the matchup. It's always on Dutch wanting to react. And so the fact that Alligator's pushing two villas forward on a 14 vil age up at the moment has a bit too much wood here. Obviously, you have the wood coming in from the distributors and uh, shipment as well. So the leftover is, yeah, it will naturally increase anyway. So the blockhouse time in here, just a little bit on the uh, delay. But I think he should be able to get that blockhouse up in time for the age up, which is the crucial time he wants to uh, try and achieve. Got three vills queued instantaneously, uh, which is nice to keep that eco ticking along. I feel that Alligator would like to have enough coin to get a batch of musketeers out um, in production as well, because that is what he really wants, is that kind of five musketeer, five Cossack timing. I think that is a great way to open versus Dutch, because it just, just forces the idle time, forces the um, unit building to be dropped, forces units to be trained, or forces... a a CM card as card number two in age two, which is a little bit awkward for Dutch. Sometimes the Dutch players do want to have CM as their th third card, so they go 700 wood, bank wagon, and then colonial militia. Also, I feel much better than I was last week when I was casting. Last week I was feeling a little bit under the weather, a bit of a sore throat, blocked nose, all that kind of bad stuff associated with man flu. No, I don't believe it was Rona, but... um. 
whatever it has the, is gone away and I'm feeling a little bit more fresher. Today went for a five mile run, uh, yesterday went for a nice long walk, watched a Formula One, absolutely insane. Uh, a gym and run on Saturday, I've, I've really been smashing out the fitness recently. Finishing the Masters, a lot of free time, just want to kind of get back into shape. And uh, yeah, we'll move on to the next chapter. Okay, look at this. Explorer coming in for the melee on this one lone villager. What a great play here from Alligator. Isolating the Ville. He thinks he can get it down, but oh, just Shackland Ville just jumps into the town centre. I think there was a little bit of a gap to get it in. But um, yeah, that, sh Shack that villager lives. It didn't have its great coats, but it that villager didn't need great coats because Daddy Shack was looking over. Okay, here comes the five Cossacks, four Musketeers pushing in still. Okay, only down to three now, but the Explorer is still here. High HP. That can tank a lot of town centre fire, and the five Cossacks have retreated. But look at this. Shekla's had to train four Hussars. He's down a bank. He spent that food he wanted on a bank into Hussar production. So that little push there from Alligator is still a win. Shekla now sending in um, 700 wood. Okay, he opened up with a bank wagon, which is a little bit of a it's, it's the less greedy play. Also, it kind of ensures you get that Hussar batch. But, okay, he's got his wood. He might get a third bank, but he's only going to get the third bank. He's not going to get that fourth bank. He's a little bit behind now on the economy front. But, um, yeah, that's just that early pressure from Alligator, just forcing that response. Hussar's going out. We'll get one villager away from the town centre. Hopefully, Alligator can get the others. Might be a good time to actually quickly get this one final herd in onto the zero back to the town centre. But he's just going to... Uh, pull all the villagers back and pull the Cossacks into retreat as well to defend from this. <laughs> nice berry wall. Where's where's the berries? Oh, yeah, look at this. That is some nice building placement. Uh, I, I love... One thing I really like about the Age of Empires series, which I... Uh, quotation marks, I hope continues into the next generation of Age of Empires games, is using buildings to make walls, a real emphasis on building placement town management and how you go about making your empire as such that's what a lot of people have a strong connotation and um the market blocking access between the tin mine or the berries or at least forcing a very single file here so you know a lot of these russian units they they just can't get in to the range ideally we do see shackler going for a few of these water buffaloes i hope he doesn't eat all of these water buffaloes but you can see he's a little bit behind on the herding i'll say de herding notoriously tough a couple and was back here, which you can certainly put some villas back. Even sending in 700 coin, which looks like Shackler wants to use to try and get up. But um, three banks in, in trying to age up afterwards, a little bit tough. All those Hussars, they got picked off by the Cossacks. I, I, I missed that one. Apologies for that. But I just assumed that Shackler would have pulled them out. But um, Alligator pushing in with a large mass of Cossacks here. Eight in total, followed by seven Musks. And this has kind of caught Shackler in a real tough point. Does he... Continue to garrison the coin with his villagers, buy two batches of food from the market and age up and try and send nine reiters and and, and, and pray? Or does he think, okay, I need to send uh, CM, maybe train a batch of units to hold? Like this this time in here from Alligator, doesn't, it doesn't look strong, but it forces, it really forces the Dutch player into a very difficult position of, do you commit one way or the other and... I think if Sheckler had the 700 wood build into the bank wagon, maybe held off one or two Hussars on that early batch, got got the four bank build down instead of the three bank, he would have enough resources to uh, reach this Fortress Age at a lot, an earlier time in, and then it would have already been you know, Fortress Age, train a batch of Reuters, and then and maybe then send in, in the nine Reuters behind. And the thing is, he's only just got his first shipment for the Fortress Age because he hasn't got that extra... It's 140 XP the fourth bank does provide. So that really has slowed down the momentum that Sheckler really wants by going to the Fortress Age. So having one shipment should be enough. And picking off all these uh, musketeers is, is going to help. Notice how Sheckler is firing, focusing down the musketeers. I think Sheckler wants to uh, focus the musketeers to then train a batch of Reuters, send Reuters. He's got coin coming in from the banks. He's uh, got coin from those crates he just gathered up as well. Just needs one batch of food being bought, and then there's a batch of five Reuters available for trains. So he's just instantly going for the nine Reuters. And, um, yeah, Sheckler hat does Feisten Zeitalter erreicht. The Fortress Age. <laughs> I, I'm always impressed every time I, I see just German language, thinking, how on earth do people read German? Like, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I saw like a funny video where, um, there's like the, 
uh, English pronunciation for aeroplane as well. Aeroplane. Then the French is like the aeroplane, and then Italian is like the aero, and then German is like it is a very long word, but it's like a it's, it roughly translates to like the flying wagon something, like the flying vehicle or whatever. Just com com combines. Gator Saints uh, Flugzug. Um, well, I guess it's aeroplane, but it's just like. I was like, oh my, that's just such a weird, just a weird way. I think the German language is uh, how words get built to, together to, to, to describe something. So, yeah, if I was to learn language, it probably would be uh, French, I guess. But, um, <laughs> yeah, a bit of balance on the side. All right, Shackler managed to get 14 Reuters out, running towards the Russian base, pulling back all these strelets here from Alligator. And the thing is, to be able to be able, yeah, to be able to age up, and not have pressure in your base is a blessing. I think Alligator, yes, these are Reuters. They do have negative multipliers versus Vils. You do, well, you don't have it just yet, but you should be getting your great coats. These Strelets should be in the Dutch players' base and just stopping all these villagers from gathering. 24, all the yaks as well. Cossacks are going for a bit of a raid here, but the infantry is so far away. Uh, the Shackler um, taking a bit of a trade here versus Strelets, so you should probably get these moving along a little bit soon. If it's the Cossacks in base, I'm a bit more interested in here. Shackler sending in eight skirmishers, researching vet hussars. And we talked about how the hussar play early on was something I'm looking uh, to in this matchup in particular, especially as all these um, water buffaloes come to an end of their harvest. Uh, even these two remaining buffaloes are still being fattened up during this time. So thank God that Shackler didn't delete all of them at the same time. And yeah, should have enough uh, resources to get another big batch of hussars. So sent nine Reuters, eight skirms. I would have probably liked to seen um, the five hussars there. Um, you can't, you can't quite work out how many musketeers for alligator has, but you know only seven of these guys, which are you know, very poor units in quality. The five hus would do so much better than the um, eight skirms. It, it, with eight, it's a low, it's a low number. You can micro them very well and get some good usage, but. Uh, Russia's one of those civs who just like to move in, zeb move, and just get on top of you. And that's where the Hussars, they do well. They want to block. You want the Hussars to block the Reuters. The Reuters pick off the Cossacks. And once the Cossacks have gone down, then the next batch of Hussars being traded just move in just to clean up the entire remaining batch of um, Strelets. But uh, yeah, I, in this matchup, I, it's, it's tough. I, I think it's a tough matchup from both sides. It, I want to say it's more even, maybe with perfect play. It's Dutch favoured, but... Um, you can see Sheckler's under pressure here. He's he's got units, but he's like, do I do I commit? I'm not too sure. He's just trying to pick units off as they come in onto the battlefield and get closer with the range of the town, with the Reuters and the skirms. And Alligator's just backing off. He's he's thinking, okay, it's not the end of the world, but what I do have going for me is 40 villagers. Uh, I assume steel trap steel trap income here. Yeah, he's got steel traps. No place to mines on this uh, coin, which he probably needs to get soon. Bit house as well, so he does need a lot more on the woods to sustain himself. Doesn't he have? Like, doesn't even have Gangsaw at the moment, which is a. Uh, you know, I would like to see Gangsaw. Sheckler here on the berries in base. No shame in gathering berries in base. Your villagers are safe. They're not moving around. They're not having to walk to hunts. It's pretty decent. Now that you've actually secured a bit of map presence, you can go out for this hunt and take it. The Sufi Mosque is a tactical um, native for you to get extra goats. Even at the moment, the goat tech here, um, 250 food, 250 coin, six fattened goats. So that's 1,800 food um, in a goat to be harvested. So it's only a very worthwhile tech. It's a Sufi mosque. is one of those S tier uh, native sieves, and who knows? I might have to do a, a native tier list on techs because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding, not a lot of knowledge on natives and how they can be best used. Anyway, here comes Sheckler sending in seven skirmishes. I dislike this move here from Sheckler. I know he has to send in the, the skirmishes because he's got no barracks at the moment, but with this double cav, veteran Reuters and Vet Huss, that's where your cav combat shipment really shines. If you're sending cav combat, these 15 Reuters are buffed, these 15 Hussars are buffed. He's trained another batch of Hussars now. He could have had 20 cav combat Hussars and 15 cav combat Reuters and just move in and moan down everything that Russia has. Cavalry is your uh, friend in this matchup. So now here comes down the barracks to continue that production of skirmishers. Maybe five halves cheekily added in can also uh, do wonders well in that sense. Because you can. it's just one of those things that with 
with Alligator, he sees his mass. He he wants to basically Zed move the Cossacks because, you know, Cossacks, they trade well versus other hand cavalry. To kill Reuters, well, you need to get on top of them anyway. And uh, if it's not the Reuters you're killing, well, it's skirmish is left behind. And that's a good enough job as it is. So, yes, here comes the, the Cossacks. They're charging straight in. Let's ride with Alligator at the moment. He's only got 20 Cossacks remaining. And it'll quickly go down. A couple of Hussars forming that frontline blocking, which is very nice. More Hussars on the right wing protecting his villagers. Villagers with the great coats will tank quite a bit. Skirms in the back line tanking very well. Actually, Muskets is charging forward. We'll get the full brunt of the Skirm volley. But yes, it's more ranged cavalry of the Reuters behind. 17 Vert Hussars still on the field here from Sheckler. Uh, Alligator moving in the straights nice and close, but even these villagers now are just tanking some shot fire. And the Cossack lines melted. The Musketeers doing only 30 attack in melee. Well, Vet Hussars having 380. That's 13 hits. And Musketeer needs to do to kill one cavalry unit. And yes, Sheckler just rolls over the, the, the Russian player. GG has been called. And Daddy Sheckler taking game number one versus Alligator. Uh, well played. Well played. And there's the first point for, for him. This series. No, that's Alligator. No. Can't reward people playing Russia and losing. Can't do that. And yeah. So 1-0 to the Dutch. The most OP Civ go it, get, um, there is in the game. <laughs> now, uh, right, Dutch has its weaknesses. I think Alligator um, didn't play uh, to the Dutch weakness. He tried to play to his strength of the Civ, of trying to mass cost-effective units. But he allows the Dutch player to breathe. And you notice how Shackley was basically out of hunt and had to rely on those uh, water buffaloes. And even on the barriers at the end, if there's more presence of units in the Russian in the Dutch player's base, Dutch player never had to send CM. And he does have CM in his deck, which, you know, is, is quite often you see Dutch players sending CM anyway, because how, how good it is versus. Got Passer, am I not in the trash can? Uh, not this iteration. Who knows? Maybe next iteration. I um, basically went around picking people I knew quite well. And so far... Like I, was, I was actually thinking Sheckler here might be on the lower end of the, the tier, but Alligator's been playing well, and Sheckler's just got a game off Alligator. So many players are taking games off each other. It's all mixed up. It's all... The game's always been good. It's just such... It's, it's so fun, this uh, league. So um, the fact that everyone's so close makes this uh, league so special. And even in the end, did Sheckler actually send in infantry combat? Commando. He maybe, maybe he was send in... Yeah. But a uh, cavalry combat was what he definitely wanted to uh, maximise the uh, uh, Reuters and Hussars there. And um, yeah, a quick look at the post game here. This is the um, A's uh, mod which I downloaded, but um, it will come into full force into the last series of today, I think. But it's okay. I kind of li I kind of like the C background. We'll have it like that. Um, Village population, yeah, Sheckler is in a couple of villages, but there's no early villages here from Alligator. Alligator uh, could have gone in a bit more deeper, did did force the R time, but Sheckler did very well to keep his uh, villages alive. I have a tendency to try and uh, Ville Micro and punch down Cossacks, but I always lose five. I'm like, why am I doing this? Ville, Mac Ville population in the end significantly in Alligator's favour, but it's the quality of troops that Sheckler has in the field, and just all this time Alligator having his units, this is, this is like, this is like, Definite trading off uh, season when you have more units. Just keep that pressure on, but allow Checklers to have the mass. Allow Checklers to run around the map with the Reuters buying time. And yeah, and that is that is the game. Russian eco stronger than Dutch towards the end. The rate of increase much higher there for the Russian player. But um, yeah, the eco came in a bit too late there for Russia. All right, let's move on to the next game. Uh, Shackler versus Alligator. Round two, let's do it. I've got to the point where I use my phone now to check for um kind of announcements on Discord. It's, I've, I've had enough of like alt-tabbing out of my game to try and find what's going on. <laughs> and it's just uh, Thomas asking me for advice in... Yeah. Oh, Dutch versus India matchup. Okay, yeah, I was about to say Dutch versus Russia. But that's another interesting matchup for another time. Game number two, we're on Dakota. This is Sheckler's home map because he's the home player, the player A in the bracket. And he's chosen to play on Dakota. Also, Sheckler won the last game, and so he had to pick his civilization first. So he's picked as the Lakota Civ to play on Dakota. So Lakota on Dakota. 
a bit of a um, bit of a n nice uh, name match there. But uh, yeah, I've seen Checkler play the Lukota on Dakota uh, three times so far during the Trash Can League. So there's a bit of a um, kind of a link going on. Checkler really liking this map here for the Lukota civilization, and um, yeah, he's, he's been doing quite well, taking a few TPs, r running around the sides, putting pressure, and he's been playing. You know, very high level with the Lakota Civ. This is certainly, I'd say he's more of a Lakota player than Dutch. He may disagree, but I think the level of his uh, Lakota player is very impressive. Where um, with Dutch, it's very skills from other Civs just naturally transition. But with Lakota, I just feel a lot of specific game knowledge, specific plans and ideas have come into Shackler's play, and it's always a joy to watch him play. So he's in, a, in the colour pink once again, spawning to the northwest of the map. Let's have a look at his deck, actually. I want to have a quick look at his... Um, we've got an idea how to play this matchup versus Britain. Five villes, um, three unit cards in age two. No two dog soldiers here, preferring to have seven war clubs over two dog soldiers, which not often would you need seven war clubs versus a musk sieve, maybe... Um, yeah, I just, I just think that the two dogs here offer just a little bit extra... Than, than the clubs. He's got Great Hunter, Bisons, the triple cav upgrade, four rifles, five rifles, five axe, nine Wakina. Uh, has both the sand T support and two kettles, so upgrade cards for your Wakina and Lakota very strong. And in the fourth age, have the attack buff, double Wakina, and infinite Bison. So, yeah, overall, a nice uh, deck. We don't see adoption, we don't see Marauders, we don't see. Oh, Mustangs? Oh, Mustang Sally. All right, let's look at Alligator's point of view. Picking 80 food uh, after taking an early trading post, looking to have an, a Virginia Company idea in this matchup here. 135 XP on the right-hand side, probably not what he needs if he's already got that trading post. Uh, Shackler just moving in, taking 25 XP, 25 coin, and the Black Bear. Very nice. I'm just having a little look around. Alligator, you know, there's actually potential here to knock down this uh, Explorer. That is... 210 HP basically, and that will definitely go down to three shots from the town centre with a full garrison of 10, given that you know the explorer only has that 10% range resist. So it, it's just point's potential. And see, if Sheckler loses explorer, then that's no trading post in transition. That would have been huge. So Sheckler playing with fire, rolling the dice there, going in for that little little tier one treasure that could have ended his game there and then basically. So Virginia Company versus Lakota. This is an interesting one. I, I feel that you you know that you're gonna get raided by axe riders or bow riders. One of the two. They kind of both do the same uh, job and role here, and it's gonna be tough to defend. You see, he's trying his best to herd in these elks and try and keep them as close to the town center as possible. Yeah, you know, that is a very nice decision to try and you know, herd in these hunts. He's got um, starting bison. First pronghorn, second pronghorn nearby, and his actually his third pronghorn is actually relatively close speaking. So. He can do quite well here to herd the sin. And if he really wanted to, he could actually wall from this cliff to the coin mine, coin mine to the edge of the map, and between the decree and the cliff. First trading post coming down here by Sheckler, looks like, in transition. Still chopping in transition. Market coming down. Enough wood here for a tribal marketplace. Hunting dogs as well. I'm just interested to see what he wants to do with the 400, where if he wants to go for a second training post, maybe go for a uh, stable war hut or stable training post in that sense, or whether he wants to do maybe um, training post stagecoach and send in a shipment to deal with the training post here. There's the tribal marketplace, nice and defensive, hunting dogs being researched. I assume he's aging up with wood here. Yep, Shek likes uh, aging up with the 400 wood, as you should do most games probably these days. And yeah, first shipment's going to be the five villagers. Uh, three sheep here coming in from Shackler. Note, I, I actually asked Alligator for the games, uh, in particular Shackler. I didn't even realize Shackler was playing Alligator this week. It, maybe, maybe it was like a last minute scheduled. So he, I asked him um, uh, just, just for the games, so he sent me across. Uh, this series is always a play all three. Each player plays everybody in the league. And um, yeah, Sheckler leading 1-0. He could win the series 3-0. He could go on to lose it 2-1 uh, to Alligator. Time will tell. 
Alligators' point of view now. Train a couple musketeers to defend. Send in five settlers, train settlers. Send 700 woods, card number one. His deck here, no pioneers. Double wood crates. Got 700 food as well. I'm not... I see a few players have been 700 food, but I think in a matchup like this, I don't really think you ever get to the point where you need to send 700 food. Missing Cav Attack, which is actually a really nice card to have uh, for your Dragoons, but obviously it does have the Cavalry Combat, and that's even better. So it's not too bad. Uh, just a standard deck here. No Jaegers in the deck. Two Falks with ref Refrigeration. I think Jaegers may be a bit too risky versus uh, Lakota with you know Lancer-style units like the Dog Soldiers. Uh, <laughs> one earth is going on in the chat like <laughs> passy timing out crab got and snooper but does remove it maybe may going for a bit of a reset on them boys i appreciate the passion uh age of killer are we in a communist country no we're in great britain the land of the monarch the land of the free and quite frankly one of the best countries in the world that's where we are 600 wood now coming from alligators, so 700 wood, 5 vil, 600 wood behind here. Musketeer defense here from alligator, which is, yeah, you know, I think it's the safest play. You know, musketeers, they do very well versus axe riders. They, they trade decently well versus bow riders in terms of, you know, if they had the same number of units or same amount of a reasonable spence, I'm sure the bow riders will just come out just a slightly ahead, but so it certainly would be cost effectively for alligator, considering most of his units, they cost food where you know Sheckler has these units cost uh, quite a lot of coin and production here of bow riders is actually quite uh, tough from only one building moves in picks one villager and has to run away three musketeers are going to try and intercept but actually it could be a nice uh, pick off here for Sheckler would he try and go for one or would he try and re um, rejoin his other bow riders crossing the map yeah there's number four here so he's going to try and rejoin let's have a look uh, eight bow riders here from Sheckler still alive 20 damage each, altogether that's 160. You know, eight bow riders, one shot a musketeer, so that's actually a real nice power creep that kind of that Shackler has achieved here. So you know, he could use that to his advantage. Maybe have the ex explorer <laughs> named as smoke this to move in and tank. It is uh yeah, it's possible here. Go for the 135 XP treasure. And I think I just saw a coin crate being sent here, so Sheckler here going for the daddy semi FF. Five Ville, Great Hunter, 700 coin, double batch of units here. And this builder here from Sheckler is, is really nice. It's forced a response here from Alligator. Alligator has yes. chosen to make 40 musketeers. He's now making long bows. He's now making musketeers. Alligator thinks Sheckler's going to make like 15 to 20 bow riders age two. Where Sheckler's like, yeah, no, I'm aging up. Um, doesn't need to send 700 wood. Um, has a lot of coin in base as well, so he could be buying his wood from the market. Uh, probably, a t well, the, the tribal marketplace having to buy wood, having to spend wood to actually get the ability to gather coin makes it a little bit awkward, but you already have uh, basically place of mines researched for you, so the kind of the buying wood idea for, from the Lakota's point of view actually makes quite a bit of sense. A lot of longbows going down there. A villager as well. What a great pickup. Sheckler, he moves in, moves out, just like the wind. You look, he's there, he's gone. A second later, an alligator is left having to uh, pick up the pieces. Those are longbows. They unfortunately didn't accomplish too much. But uh, alligator's thinking, okay, this is absolutely fine. I'm going to send my own coin. I'm going to age up with a large mass of units. I should be pretty fine. But uh, it was Nova. Sheckler is already hitting the floor. With two training posts, remember, the two training posts here from Sheckler really provide himself a great position in terms of momentum. You know, one and a half shipments ready to go. That basically means there'll be two shipments back to back here from the Lacrosse player, and you just have to assume it's going to be the five rifles into cavalry combat, or maybe uh, nine Wakinas into five rifles, just for that real sh kind of. Momentum building shipments, which help you deal with the musketeers. I don't think an early three dogs is going to be the the number one play here. I think um, hiding a couple of rifle riders in between your bow riders, have the bow riders to tank, but the rifles to really do damage versus the musketeers is a good shout. Also, Wakina's naturally outranging musketeers is also a good idea in that sense as well. So, Shackler aging up. Oh, he's aging. He's, 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 He's aged up with the Bisons. Fitzbro will be very happy to see a Bison age up here. I'm 
just a little bit hesitant to myself. You know, I do still see lots of prong wounds here. Yes, I do know you get the 20% bonus to hunting as well on this age up in the Fortress Age. And um, just 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 lacking a little bit of tempo here. Alligator climbing ahead, uh, 6,000 score in the lead. But more importantly, Alligator is halfway up. Age up was a little bit late, but I think by the time Shackler pushes in, he should just about have enough time to research Vet Musketeers. And with 35 Musketeers, this is the timing that Lakota really want to put on. They really want to send in that shipment of either rifles or wakinas and really move in and try and pick apart colonial armies before they can get upgraded. But uh, Shackler is just happy to sit a little bit. He's wanting to make the good use of of the fortress age tech he's also got three sheep here as well i would like him to try and get these to the front and get these gathered you know sheep are only useful once they're eaten you know they, they don't they don't do too much if they're sat around alive unfortunately and for a time in push sieve like the lakota are um yeah every resource you can invest into your army it just helps your effort for the game much much better so a bow rider with keener composition here from shekla sending in five Sending in five axes behind this instead of five rifles. Um, I suppose the axes are nice for snaring your opponent's army, but that is what I would say and argue that your explorer is there for. Remember, these are colonial units. They are not upgraded. And you last time you did check, you saw lots and lots of musketeer units. So Sheckler hoping he's got enough Wakinas to deal with the musketeer mass here from the British player. But, um, yeah, this is going to be a bit tough here with uh, Shackler. Um, he's, going to, he's going to push in. A couple of musketeers on the wrong side of the crease assessment from Parfin, but uh, Shackler uh, gives forgiveness to those units and decides to back out. And you can see he's waiting for the cavalry combat, but he's gone He's gone nine wakinas, five axes, cavalry. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was saying, like, nine wakinas, five rifles and cavalry combat, or five rifles, cavalry combat. So I like how he's, you know, he's waiting for the cavalry combat even after shipping a cavalry shipment as well to kind of cross multiply their effects and make them um, like a real strong push. Did see that he has the community plaza down at home as well, so he can go into war dance whenever. A couple of vills here will get picked off. Okay, he does have his great coats and axe rider on a village as well. Wakina doing pretty decent versus a uh, longbows. It's a trade they will eventually lose, but uh, the, the longbows are away from the musketeers and Wakina's going to move across to get some more juicy pickups here. But yes, Sheckler backing off. I think he realizes with no hand cav here and this uh, massive Wakinas versus longbows, which are, you know, they excel versus skirmisher units. We have a, a skirmisher killer here versus pretty weak skirmishers in the Wakinas. Yeah, Sheckler's having to force. I think Sheckler's now thinking, okay, now, now I've got cav combat. Can I try and um, position myself to be able to send the dog soldier a big button with three dog soldiers? That's maybe his next idea of a play. A couple of sheeps here. Has a lot of vigils on coin naturally, so he's still trying to go with the bow rider idea. With 19 bow riders, you would have to assume that's enough anti cav. I know that these are you know, very good all round units, but uh, this is this is where you need the dog soldiers to come in and basically bail you out of your situation. The hunting situation from Alligator is uh, getting a little bit difficult. A couple deers on the right hand side, the army is occupying, occupying the right. And, uh, but he has done very well to move in the pronghorns on the left. I think Alligator would be very happy with how the map spawned. It's not often you have the luxury to have essentially four pronghorn hunts herdable to your town centre or near your town centre. Most often times you get two with potentially one far out. So it's been pretty good. Axe Rise still not upgraded. Sheckler only has three. He's not looking to make more Axe Rise. I think he's, he's sending three dog soldiers now. Still making Wakinas. He's going to try and trade off his uh, cavalry versus a couple longbows and villagers, but uh, yeah, he's starting to get them out. Um, a little bit unfortunate that uh, the army from Alligator... <laughs> There's just so much stuff here from British. Look at this. The Brits, they're just, just unit. They're like ants. There's ants on the screen. There's so many. We have 32 longbows and more. Of them, 50 musketeers. 50 is the max you can have in a group. And also, Alligator's doing very well moving into the Dragoon competition here. I think Alligator's aware that... Uh, by sending the falconets, he needs to make dragoons to cover them because his only possible weakness would be something like five rifles behind a line of eight dog soldiers coming from the, the shipment and the uh, big button. 
These guys go a bit, a bit far, but are extended. I uh, don't, don't, don't want to lose them too cheaply here. Looking at Shackler's deck, he's still got the other cavalry shipments to send after, after this as well, if he, he sees uh, to be the idea. 15 minutes on the clock now will mean that if Shackler does call Dog Soldier a big button, we'll give him five dogs, which is, at that point, it's a decent trade, and it's going to come at a decent time to engage the Brit army. Uh, 18 minutes, it's like, a, it's like a really good tech to have. It's like a really good value shipment, but maybe the Brit army at that moment in time has got that a little bit too big for the six dog soldiers to be wholly effective and you can see Shetler now going for elite axe rider and actually spending that food income onto axe riders which i'm not going to say is a bad idea but uh, it's a decision which essentially accomplishes the same goal of you know mass starting to master hand cavalry with shipments oh this is nice here R rescuing that healer treasure actually puts into good work healing up the explorer uh, to 4 HP as an axe rider here, which could benefit from being healed up as well. I love how the dog soldiers, they look absolutely fearless with their... Um, is that is that twigs? Is that twigs in the, in their head? Just 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 speared with twigs through, through their head. And the uh, axe riders have got basically a towel. Just It's a cool it's a cool character. It's just got a towel to cool himself down a little bit. Alligator tentatively pushing across the map, thinking he wants to secure mid-map control of the gold mine, maybe starting to put pressure on the trading post. Kind of feel like I would like to see the army push from the south, because that way you're protecting this hunt, protecting the two mines, but then you're kind of pushing the way that if you go this way with your army, you do kind of secure the two hunts that way, and the villagers can come with you. If the villagers start to move from the, this direction, could be a bit risky there. Uh, Sheckler has positioned himself more to the top side. Actually, Musk's going far forward here, and Wakina's about to turn and have a goody volley, but uh, oh, Sheckler missing an opportunity for a couple of kills. And um, yeah, Alligator now moving up the longbows to cover that Wakina weakness. Okay, here's a big, big uh, attack here from Sheckler. Full wall dance market. Cavalry HP just about being researched with four axe riders being trained. Total army population, more than 50 axe, uh, Wakinas, 11 axes. Borai's in defense at the moment, not being called to the fight just yet, but these, uh, there's just a lot of units here to deal with the hand cavalry. Oh, he just pulls them back at the last moment. I thought he made contact with the uh, Falconets at the moment, but the Falconets are interested in the cavalry. Wakina's actually doing very good damage versus the the rest of the army but remember this is a full um war cry um war ceremonial dance 25 attack each of the and these axe riders they smash in very very hard 49 attack on the dog soldiers axe riders with 62 attack both falconets going down burrows in behind musketeers they don't have to go, go into volley mode or uh, melee mode they go into melee mode but you know burrows absolutely chewing through them behind where keen is just melting the british army where's the longbows okay the longbows are behind the dragoon line so the musketeers have basically gone down i think alligator starting to put transition to a longbow dragoon army which is going to certainly help him a little bit more in this situation but uh as fights go for shepard that was a really good fight and still has the kind of ranged unit advantage 48 working is down to 25 longbows and brick player starting to run low on hunts so that big fight here not going great for alligator he's on the back foot but sheckler i don't think he's actually uh, called dog soldier big button at the moment i might be wrong on that one i think i only saw three dog soldiers on the field from the shipment so if he's now sending 1,000 food like he is and gets on the f floor, he can train a batch of a full batch of axes and dog soldiers at 18 minutes, which is going to give him six dog soldiers to basically move in and uh, merp whatsoever. And Longbow's here, they, they are trading, but he just, just can't remass. Alligator, he's, he's, got, he's got three paroxes to spam out, so that's good, but he's got no wood. No wood for Longbow's. He's got enough resources for a batch of Dragoons and some Musks, but... Uh, yeah, Shackler just ramming in his army, trying to make the most of what he has now. Carrying on a war dance, might need to pivot into the siege dance to take down the barracks, which he does now. That's good use of um, the tr tribal pit that he has. So fair play for Shackler for that one. That barracks goes down. But yeah, there's uh, five Assars coming behind. More longbows being trained. The batch has been completed there from this barracks. 
And um, yeah, just, just trying to really mass up anti Wakina forces. You do see here the, the Hussars being shipped here for Alligator serving that purpose as well. Back into his deck. He's only got nine muskets to send. Cavalry combat, 1,000 coin. I think, I think your cavalry combat here is what you kind of need to get your Dragoon count up to. Deal versus Burrise, but then actually Dragoons, they don't counter anything here. It's, it's hard to argue. You want, maybe you want mass Hussar longbow. Don't have a thousand food. Does a thousand wood here help? And you have the wood guys on hunts. It soon got to the point where Alligator needs to build mills as well. Like he has just pulled off ten villagers here. So I think that's gonna be our first mill of the day from Alligator going down. A saw batch in queue. But meanwhile, Sheckler's in paradise here. He's just gumps off that uh, food on the floor. He's he's at it all up. It looks like another batch of Axe Rise about to come out. He doesn't complete the batch. The reason he doesn't complete the batch, he wants to get the Dog Soldier a big button. He could wait one more minute to get to 21 minutes for a 7 Dog Soldier big button. Tribal Marketplace, mid-map now for these villagers to move on and carry the coin. Batch of has been trained. Quite a lot of guys still on the uh, ceremonial pit, just chilling. On ceremonial dance as well, just increased the production speed of Wakinas. So he's actually losing out quite a bit of eco to do this at the moment. And Alligator's gonna go for a speculative raid. I just I can't I can't see Checkler taking the fight before uh, Dog Soldier's big button coming in. I think, oh, but is, is he is he has he remembered it? He's just gonna, he's just gonna go for a full batch of five axes at the moment. Maybe he's thinking actually I need to strike now. But uh, yeah, the, the mass from Brit is just free massing, and um, it's gonna be a tough one. Remember though, Lakota Cavalry triple charges at the moment. These units are. Beast League units, 387 HP, 20% range resist, and a massive 54 attack. Slight negative multiplier versus Dragoon units, but that shouldn't be too bad. 20 on the coin, though. That's a lot of, yeah, that's a lot of coin gatherers. That's, I, I don't really know where this coin's going or to be spent. The dancers have come off. They're going to go onto the tree line. Maybe they're clicking down onto the uh, hunts. Where, where's this one going? I can't see a waypoint. I assume it's he's clicked a hunt. That way... You don't get to see a banner. But, um... Sheckler just playing the long game. Like, he's just happy with his position. He just knows that when the big fight happens, he does have villagers nearby a uh, community plaza to slam on that war ceremony and really puts the his army into overdrive. A couple of games. Try and get some picks on the Musketeers and Dragoon lines. Do see a couple going down here. Longbows, not too many uh, standing. But his food count here for Sheckler's basically dried up. He's actually packed... Going to engage right away now with 19 axes. They're dropping down to the Dragoons in the da fire pit. There's not actually too many dancers there. Only 13, so a 13% attack. These were kids only having 22 attack compared to the 25 they have earlier. And yeah, just the longbows here melting through the bow riders. The axe riders going down to the cavalry combat. Alligator, Alligator hasn't sent cavalry combat, but just the Dragoons standing firm. And just the no dog soldier, big button here from Sheckler, really hurting his chances in this massive fight and missing out on a. Uh, many villagers there from the community plaza. Here comes a reinforcing batch of five axes, uh, four axes though. Uh, most of the hand cab from the Hussars are going down. A couple of barrels still standing. The axes are going to try and uh, move in. So far, good micro here, control here from Alligator. This should be somewhat of an even trade, but the reinforcements here from the Brit player is just so much stronger than what the Lacosta player could offer, given that the Lacosta player has a smaller eco as well as villagers dancing for attack, which also hurts the reinforcements. Yeah, the army the strength initially looked so good there for uh, uh, Sheckler, but I was worried for the lack of uh, dog soldiers in this fight, and I think that fear has been proven true, to be honest. Dog soldiers, absolutely godly units. But the follow-up here from Sheckler, he's... Where's his shipment? Oh, it's the uh, two kettle support. Oh, that's, that's tough, upgrading Wakina HP when you've already lost all your Wakinas. Uh, it's a bit of a shame to see that card come in. Maybe sanity support, I guess. But um, then you'd be forced to train more axes when you really want to save that food for the dogs. Soon reaching that 24 minutes, big button. The Explorer's been revived back at the marketplace. Looks like full HP, so um, Sheckler using the Explorer revived dance there, getting the full HP Explorer. Uh, good use of that. Um, might go back to war dance to help his um, kind of kiting ability here and uh yeah Shackley just letting alligator leave the scene which is uh is 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 what it is i think you'd hoped to try and get a few more picks on the longbows retreating 
And Longbow is now at 26 range. Alligator, has, has he sent Yeomanry? Yes, he has sent uh, the Yeoman. So, yeah, very long range uh, Longbows and uh, the godly units just stand and deliver. Are these in range? That... It feels like it felt like those longbows there were in range, but it looks like the range is just a bit on the outside. Uh, Lakota has obviously the access to the big button, but I don't think Shackler's going for it this game. I think he's wanting to try and prioritize continuous um, batches of units being trained to have that pressure. But um, unfortunately, I think the, the main issue here is that the Brit player has been allowed to get onto many many hunts many more than he probably should have or in well, the map spawn as well probably could have lent itself uh 15 bison has now been sent uh, from the hometown center remember there's uh, quite a few units here 13 villagers villagers still being trained there's 15 bisons there's the wise woman 20 percent there's hunting dogs there's the great hunter 25 percent so in total that's a uh, 35 55 percent gathering increase on the food here for lakota villagers and that's what he needs for the big batch of Dog soldier, he just needs the food, which he can get gathered so fast. Shackley just needs to hold on and try to go for like a one more YOLO swaggins push with what he has. But if he does go for another push, he just needs to fully commit. Just has lots and lots of coin around, um, which is fine. Might need a second uh, production facility though for it. And yes, the village is going straight on to um, the bisons to eat. Alligator though, pushing in at a really good time here. Shackley trying to mass the units with this increased of um food underneath his town center he's like oh i don't really want to engage now the villagers are they going to be pulled back onto the the fire pit no they're not but you can see how shackler's just trying to have a fighting retreat here he doesn't want to take on the brit army at this location especially with the uh, cliff the tree line here he kind of wants at least alligator to be standing well nowhere's really good to be honest maybe there maybe here but trading post tree line this this training post is going to be a nightmare to path around. It's always so bad for cavalry units to get around that training post. Makes it a real bit of an issue. He's just got too many on the coin. That I think for Sheckler, that's that's the problem he has. He's kind of gone out on the map. It, it, for him, it makes more sense for these guys to be on the coin gathering. Yeah, these guys were on the coin as well. But I think these guys should have always been on this uh, hunt instead. And just that little bit of a mix mismatch. He can go for Santi support though, so he could wait for another card, continue making Axe Riders, and then send the upgrade for the Axe Riders, but he just, he, by that way, he just won't have the resources to tech the big button, which is, got he's trying for. 30 villagers now on to food. He's pulled a lot of villagers back from the middle. He's going onto the fire pit to dance. He wants to try and take his fight, does he? Actually, he's got a lot of keenness here. Dragoon's gone forward. This is going to be a good pickup here for... Uh, Sheckler, alligator moving back. I just see lots of plus 18s. Burr on the southern side. Get a pick on the on the Hussars. And uh, yeah, alligator uh, the positioning here hasn't been as good as the previous fights. Uh, Sheckler's a good trade here. Might want to back off and keep his um, advantage while he still has anti-cavalry, while he still has some sort of cavalry. But yeah, standing in the range of longbows is probably not what he wants at the moment. In the sense that he's got he's got so many of these he's got so many Wakinas, 35, but he just hasn't got the units to go with them. And that's where the Wakina shine. They, they, as a standalone unit, they're bad. But when they're behind lots and lots of rows of tanky cavalry, that's where they excel. Higher attack, low HP, lower range. That doesn't matter if this, if you'll have cavalry on top of the longbows, longbows and melee, and Wakinas can fire behind. So yeah, it's, it's pushing back for the time being. Sending in Santi support now. Okay, so now, now he's got obviously all these villagers on, on the food. There's, there's going to be just about enough food here to get a batch of. Our bows sent and in Santi up and maybe go for. Oh, please. Please, could, could we get could we get Fitzbro's uh, dog soldier emote in the chat just 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 to pray for Sheckler to get the big button? Because otherwise, later on, if when I look back at this uh, recorded game, I'll be like, ah, oh, damn, didn't that guy chat so much about dog soldier big button and that never came in? Hmm. <laughs> Equal my prey and sleep with the dog soldier emote, yes. But uh, Snooper, it's you know it's nearly twenty eight. It's it's twenty seven minutes. Snooper, you, you're going to need nine dog soldiers in that mode. I want to see nine dog soldiers in a row because that's what Sheckler can send for fifteen hundred nine dog soldiers. Sheckler, not like this, not like this. The, the thing is, the score the, the score gap is still insane. But the score is in the it's in the barracks, it's in the manor houses, it's in the mills, it's. In the villager population, he's got four mills, they're quite so gathering, but 
The army can get cleans, especially with only 20 vet dragoons. He does have cav combat being sent, but no cav attack. Uh, he doesn't have. He does have cav uh, ranged cavalry caracol. Uh, my apologies. I have to pull them, pull them back, pull them back. Wait, wait, wait. You gotta wait. Go wait for the big boy. Wait for the big boy timing. I'm getting excited, but this is Alligator's um, macro. He's got lots of units here. Sheckler. Come on. I'm Team Sheckler here. Oh, he's just standing still with 25 units. No, get off the dance. Get off the dance. The priority. The priority must be the Dog Soldiers. I don't think we'll see the Dog Soldiers this game. He's going to go for another fight at the moment with 25. Uh, War Dance. He's going he's to get such quite a lot of kills though. 69 melee attack. He's easily two shot kill longbows. That longbow line has been basically decimated. Wakir's going behind doing very good on the Dragoons. Like, it's still another good trade, but Sheckler is now basically out of food. And that's when his problem, real problem really lies. It's still a cleanup though. Like, you can't really see behind the trees, but there's just still 30 Wakinas here from. Alligator, it's just the 24 longbows, but they're going to get minced by the Axe Riders and Wakina combination. And uh, Alligator only has 10 Dragoons, 3 on the field, 7 reinforcing from southern positions. But uh, yes, um, that's, a good, that's a good fight there from Sheckler. And that just shows the power. Just imagine just imagine if there was Lancer-style cavalry with high HP on that front line on longbows. That's, that's what we have to imagine. And uh, Sheckler's food count... Is... That... That batch of five axes, that there is 800 food. 800 food plus here, we'll get to about 1300. Yeah. Be tough. <laughs> what happened in that fight? It just had 69 attack, elite axe riders, two shots in longbows, and still having 440 HP. It's, as soon as longbows attack axe riders, they're, they're kind of essentially wasting their arrows i mean it's very hard to like right i want eight of these to click this wakina eight of these to click this wakina but from the king's point of view it's just like i want just anything going down is so good because i got my uh, attack dance but uh yeah the mass behind is kind of dried up and the thing is Sheckler needs to protect this mass of wakinas because that's the only thing that's going to help him deal with the dragoons and every time the longbows attack a wakina it's just such a, such a good trade there for alligator and that's where the um Oh, he's sending in four uh, Axe Riders there from the Age 2 shipment. Still a good shipment. But uh, yes, our Dog Soldier Dream will not be happening in this game. He's out of hunt. This isn't a hunt. This is a treasure map. The only hunt on the map are the deers nearby. And yeah, the Burkina Mass is going down. And uh, I'll just speed this along a little bit because I, I, I feel I feel that it's going to be just a slow leap downwards to send Spyro here for a Lakota player. He's retreating backwards. He's taking good trades. Axe Rise coming in again, but just loft longbows here to just said move. And uh, we're up to 32 minutes in the game. Lakota player out of food. He's pushing forward, but all the villagers here, they don't have their great coats. They're getting destroyed by 26 range longbows, and the GG has been called. So, after two games. Alligator taking it to one all. Shackler losing with his home, with his main new, uh, main sieve. I want to look at the military counts. This is going to be insane. So military unit populations. The populations actually are relatively even, are traded evenly, which it, it always felt that like Shackler was crushing the fights, but it was never the case. Maybe quite a lot of his population here from uh, the British player was in reinforcements. The, the continuous production of units from British players is so much more than... Lakota. You can probably see it from the kind of kill-death ratio. Yeah, 385 minutes free. Um, lost 357. Sheckler only lost 264 units and killed 367. So the kind of kill-death ratio there from Sheckler was positive. It was it was strong. But uh, just missing out that final, final bit of civilization strength in the Dog Soldiers. That's what he needed to take this game into his own victory. And, but as the game went on, especially like past 21 minutes, that British eco was just taking off. It was absolutely on fire. And I think the, the, the optimal time for the Dog Soldiers was probably 21 to 24 minutes. Uh, I probably would have encouraged it earlier, but uh, if you leave it later, you get so much more bang for your buck. Um, and that, that final fight, that final big fight by the trees, it might not be the biggest fight of the game. Yeah, around, around the kind of... Um, yeah, 28 minutes. Just look how the Brit army evaporates from the 25 units on the fire pit and triple combat. Okay, so, so that, that's the thing I want to quickly talk about, is that just how the Lakota units are calculated. 
we have I don't think I can find Max Rider. That's a, this could be a poor example, but I try my best. Oh, well, is imagine this is an Axe Rider. It's the base unit. It has the elite upgrade. It has cavalry combat, attack, and HP to form the unit that is the elite, elite Axe Rider. So it has 20% attack on the elite, 15 on the cav attack, 15 on the cav combat. So that there is 50% stronger than the base upgrade. But then the 25% multiplier from the community plaza with all 25 that are just standing on multiplies that final number. So that 50% upgrade is actually getting increased to 62.5 percent you know upgrade percentage on you know the base it's just getting much more or it's not even that like even the base attack gets upgraded as well it, basically it's a final number then gets times by uh 25 percent so it was like 59 percent on that on that final 59 attack on the final unit times that by 25 we're up to like mid 70s it's an insane insane combination of unit strength and the community plaza and Sheckler makes very good use of the community plaza. I think that's a, a good learning point for other players if they want to play Native Americans is use your community plaza when it matters because it turns the tide of the fight in your favour so significantly because the war dance, the siege dance, they affect the final stats multiplicatively, not additively as other upgrades do. But yeah, that's a great game. I enjoyed that one. Let's move on to recorded games. Let's go on to the next one. Shackler Alligator, game three of this play all series. Coming up for you right now. Man, that fight gave me a heart attack, yes. Uh, just, just there were just too many in the woods, man. You weren't there in that, man. They're just they're just they're just popping out the woods. Okay, final game. We're on Himalayas. Shackler playing as the French, Alligator playing as the Aztecs. Now, Alligator is the player B in this matchup. This is Alligator's home map, so the home map for Alligator is Himalayas. Also, Alligator won the last game, so he's able to choose his civilization first and is going to be playing as the Aztecs. Oh, Sheckler has donned as the French for the final game. Now, I feel like Alligator's Aztecs pretty decent. I remember I had a, had a game versus Alligator, and at first I thought I was doing well, and then I was like, no, I'm not doing well. I'm kind of like in trouble here, and then kind of got back into it, and then just turned into like a 45 minute stalemate. <laughs> Had to break it with um, the South African Revolt super late game stuff. But uh, Sheckler, his main is a Dutch, the Lakota, and um, struggling then afterwards, I think, for his uh, Civ pool. I think that's one thing he's uh, quite struggled with in this uh, format, is trying to utilise multiple Civs in a, ser in a series. And I think his French play is similar to his German play, maybe a little bit down on the German play. And uh, yeah, the Germans was a decent level, but I'm interested to see how he goes about the French here. It's not his main squeeze. It's not what he's used to. It's not what he feels comfortable playing. And versus Alligator playing as Aztecs, it may be a, a quite a fast, aggressive game, which leads to, if you're not familiar with a Civ, you're not going to be familiar on how to yeah, make the nuanced decisions of how to defend well, how to... Do you make musketeers, crossbows? Do you send the 700 wood first? Do you send the four vills first? Like, all these decisions here... Uh, for the French player is going to be a bit difficult, just the lack of experience and other games played as reference points. Uh, nice wood treasure over here. 75 wood guarded by two tigers. Sheckler will make his way over there. Has he? Has Sheckler seen it with his native scout? I think he has. Well, no, he hasn't, but he's scouted it now. So it'll be a pleasant surprise. Obviously, he went for the early age one trading post. Gonna, gonna try and go for a 13 vil agent, but I think he will realize very quickly that with the food nerf that French received, 50 food can be pushed towards a 14 villager age up, which is getting more in standard of what to expect, but uh, Aztec assume they're still going to be aging up there with the uh, fast age politician to the second age and looking at Alligator's point of view has um, one warrior priest dancing to himself, he's saying come my fellow Aztecs, listen to me, preach, and then there's a uh, uh, there's just no one there to listen to him, um, but this is a this is a kind of a noble man. He he will keep going. He will keep spouting out his ideas until somebody eventually joins him on the community plaza. Alligator here converting a masterless samurai here. That's a very nice treasure to convert on the Himalayas map. It's a high HP unit, of course, decent attack, but it's uh, allowing Disco Pogo to uh, 
certainly stay alive that little bit longer here. 80 food. Yeah, it won't help him in transition a little bit. It might, it might, it might can get, you may be able to get all of the just off now onto wood. So yes, actually that's a really nice treasure. Uh, reduces the amount of um, food he has to give. And these villagers here, they're hoping for a bigger tree line than actually was in the end. He's actually pulled some sun back to try and get that next villager in key behind. But uh, yeah, two villagers moving forward. You can see that alligator's looking to go for that war hut. Mid-map in transition. Alligator knows that Shaq has got a trading post. So in terms of locations to drop a war hut, you know, the most natural position here would be in this location here, in between the trees, the coin mine, the Udati temple, and the trading line. But it might even be a little bit of an instance where he pushes a little bit more forward and drops the war hut into this location here. Put pressure on the trading post, the mine, um, trees to cover as well, but uh, trying to put some more pressure on these forward hunts as well. So you, you can see he's just naturally gone to the middle of the map, but um, if, if the Aztec player... Oh, I don't want to flare. If the Aztec player just had a little bit more of a scouting awareness, he wouldn't... He doesn't know this cliff here exists. And I think he would then try to position his war hut in a location to the side of the cliff. Yeah, the war hut's going right down on that middle trading post site. Uh, a, a bit exposed, to be honest. Considering what you have around you, um, I know that it's quite hard for other civs to push an Aztec war hut, but there's a lot of natural wall in here to protect your war hut as well. So maybe Aztec will likely be going for a second war hut at a later point, but it just feels that maybe you know, Musk's can easily push this way. And this way in retreat but if it was a bit more even if it was just here then it's blocking off this surface area maces can sit here firing across this way can run through a small gap and if you want to siege from the french side you need to kind of run position your army more into this side it's very nuanced it's very probably not even a matter at all because it might be the alligators it's going to run straight into sheckler's base sheckler open up with stable um does sheckler have colonial militia in deck he does not he has pioneers which is um Interesting. So, um, yeah, it is interesting, actually. I'm not too sure if we see pioneers coming in. The thing is, on Thompson's thing, is they survive uh, a town sends a shot, naturally. They don't. They died to a CM shot. Puma Spearman go down to a, a CM shot. Coyotes don't go down to a CM shot, I don't think, no. But it's the... Sheckler, from his point of view, he really needs to research blunderbuss, great coats and utilizes 16 range attack to basically trade off the Ontons and Slingers. I, th I think sh I think these CBs can actually win a fight versus Ontons and Slingers. Obviously, you don't want to lose a CDB because that's your villager going down, but this, he's already, Shaqqa's already on the back foot. The Berries forward is also huge. This is 4,000 resources, but Shaqqa can't really defend, which, yeah, you don't often want to go for Berries, but it's not like Shaqqa's been herding at all. Like, this is, I think Shaqqa's thinking, hmm, wonder where my next hunt is. Maybe I've left this one a little bit too late, and... I think Shekla's unfortunate that a hunt should naturally spawn over here, or a cliff and a hunt, but none. It's just it's just open. This side map's really... Shekla's got no cliffs nearby him, really, apart from this forward one. It's just open. Okay, outcome uh, the five facades on pure, pure Mace Holtons, plus two massless Samurais, but they do not have Multipliers versus Cavalry. They're just pseudo uh, units, and um, actually they're now they're now taking the Hussar fire, so... Uh, alligator getting away with that one, just a little bit, only losing the four slingers, could have lost the entire batch there. Musketeer has been trained by Shackler, how it's been thrown down behind. Um, has a full batch of muskets in queue, but doesn't have enough resources for Minutemen behind. 700 coin being sent. And uh, Alligator, is, it, it, it feels like it feels like Shackler's like out for it. He's like, I'm actually going to push out and, and, and deal with you. Uh, there's a Puma Spearman here in cover mode they're marching very very slowly okay that, no, i think they'll just join up with another unit there but um there's this game th this game is just it feels a little bit close musketeers seem to be actually accidentally punched a tibet macaque but uh they'll be fine to beat off these units especially with the hussars reinforcing second batch of musketeers shekler sending 700 coin i don't think shekler's got any chance of aging up i think he needs to stay h2 and play this but uh missed opportunity with that kind of earlier push to push out he needs all the food he can get now but uh the next batch of Aztec is going to come in puma spearman still 135 hp here the thing is once the pumas go down but it's free rain for the hussars to move in don't see alligators going into any coyotes just yet musketeer hussar is a nice uh, unit competition to have versus uh, to kind of dissuade the production of coyote runners and it's just basically Bow Pike 
on steroids versus versus muscast, which over time I think muscast dominates. Bit of a low in the game at the moment, guys. Um, we do see uh, 600 wood being sent here by Alligator. He does have infinite 600 coin. He also has double 5 vil and 4 vil available to himself as well. No Coyote in the deck, but does have Coyote combat. Uh, three Warrior Priests have already been sent, and these guys are on the experience dance, getting the shipments in a bit faster. So he's got another shipment ready to go. So the coin there is going to be used to make more Puma Spearmen. Building that second war heart, and that's going to help him with that defensive kind of structure we keep on talking about. But he's not really putting the pressure on Alligator. Alligator, not Alligator, Shackler, but Shackler himself is not really wanting to go for the hunt, which is... He, he knows he's, he's got the Explorer here. He knows he's, in, he's basically in super-duper trouble. I would say something a bit more profound, but uh, super-duper is probably going to be enough uh, to describe how much he needs to push and capture the heights and in one cdb now explorer moving forward but he sees the army he's gonna try and get one shot and then move away i think he's gonna try and run from this point of view don't kill it please i just kill it but he needs to basically move his army to a position where he can try and discourage the aztec player the thing is now that aztec sees this villager he's like okay you're out of hun okay i'm just gonna sit here then and just say come and come and get me and yeah he's cdb's running but the misses should turn on fire Hassar's pushing forward. This is uh, Hassar's charging out the musketeer in crossbow support. Shackler sending in crossbows. Massive batch of units here. This is his. This is his time to break out. Look at how many resources he's got available to stack. That's be a full batch of um, muscles. Well. He's got to buy a batch of food as well to get Minutemen. You would hope he's, he's maybe trying to call Minutemen now. He's just reaching a bit of trouble. But yeah, a couple of CDBs on the coin mines as well. Mace Holton's fallen onto the Hassar's. Hassar's going straight into the pipeline. Actually, there's not, there's not really enough maces here, and the crossbows. Crossbow's ID should be a little bit more forward of the Musketeers tanking with their 20% range resist and avoiding their, the Entente and Slinger's double multiply versus heavy infantry. So that's where that's going to work. And the, the, the CDBs, they're moving forward. But the CDBs, in that, if the CDBs were in that fight, the game was over. If Sheckler fought the CDBs, Aztec army just falls apart. They have nothing to do with it. And we actually do see pioneers come in from Shackler. Oh my god, this is going to be so, be so good. But it's actually, it's not like it's so good, like, oh my god, it's a meme. It's actually going to be so good, this game. The 1500 coin is less than ideal. He's just going to move all his villagers forward onto this hunt now. Yes, he, he, he knows what he wants to do. He does have his great coats. That villager should just survive. He does. See, guys, get your great coats. If you get your great coats, you're going to just survive. Things they, they shouldn't do, but they, they just do. So Pioneer's coming in. Hussar's still on that front line just tanking. They take so little damage versus these slingers. That's, that's so cool to see. But it's the Musks here. Um, if you're sending Pioneers, just please research Blunderbuss because then you can make full use of your combat boosted villagers. Musks in the front line. Villagers just chilling. A couple coin miners here. Not necessarily needing... Uh, to be mined, going to push forward behind this. Puma's chasing Hussars away, but they're going to go down to the infantry, but the Mace Holden's going to such good uh, time, and uh, it's just a shame. The Entente things are blasting the heavy infantry away. There's nothing here which isn't heavy infantry and doesn't have 360 HP and doesn't have a range resist to tank the Entente and Slingers. Oh yeah, Shackler, there is. It's the villagers. And maybe this is the kind of the moment of the uh, bit of unfamiliarity with the sieve and how yeah, you can utilize everything to your advantage here. But uh, just needs to turn and fight. Turn and fight there, Shackler, with Vils. And um, yeah, the army's kind of like crumbled behind in this spot. Hussar's still trying their best to get on top of the units here. But it's just too many slingers. Musk's running away. And yeah, it's just. It's, it's, this, this game has been a case of do I, don't I. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a truth or dare. It's just a hesitation of should I or should I not. And. Um, Maybe a massive vill pop here from the town centre, right on top of the slingers, all in melee mode, could do very well uh, cutting down the army. If CDB is coming to fight or going to the town centre, uh, sending in pioneers as a literal anti-raid shipment here, it just feels awkward. A couple of villagers on the right side though, hunting, that's quite nice, there's Ibex on the cliff, don't know how they got there. Maybe climbed the cliff, I don't know what's going on. But um, yeah, I, think, I, feel, I feel this is, yeah, Minutemen coming out now with five hus, it's just feels it's a little bit wrong time for it to happen uh, 
And I have the sound bug. I have no idea why the sound bug happens, but it's okay, though. Uh, we'll, we'll restart the game after this uh, game for the next series and see if we can get this one sorted out. Crossbow's been sent in from Shackley. He's holding on. Now he's throwing the villagers. These villagers with no blunderbuss still. Only 10 in the hand attack. 8 range, 12 range in total. Um, missing out on extra combat stats. And, but actually, he's he's focusing down the Puma Spearman. He's, the cogs are turning. He's working. If I kill the Pumas... And Hussar's coming out. Please pop the villagers with the crossbows. This is going to be a big pop. This could be a game change. Deciding pop. Hussar's are coming out. Crossbows about to come out. Crossbows do come out. CDB come out as well. I said CDB come out as well. Ah. Daddy Shack. Welcome to the trash can league. You've been dumped on by Alligator. And unfortunately, you've missed the opportunity to come back into the game. <laughs> well, what, what's going on with you guys in the chat? AJ could say, is that a meme? I was told as me that, um, to be Max versus Lion. No, Lionheart is not part of the Trash Can League. Uh, he won't be featuring today. Uh, next matchup will be between Patsy and Risotto. So... If you guys on YouTube want to see that, well, hit that playlist button. It might be released. Oh, yeah, it probably won't be if you're watching it on the day release. But if you're watching later on, I have a whole playlist dedicated to every cast of the TCL. So go check that out. And all the games will be uploaded there in the full series. Timestamps, so you can pick your matches you want to watch or watch them from the start. It should be good. Pumas Spearman's here. Actually, quite low counter here from Alligator. He's up to 38 villagers, sending in more villagers behind us. I think that's where the real problems here from Shackley lie. He does have some villas out on the map. He's got more over here uh, hunting but uh just not many villagers here wanting to take the fight and just three hussars is not ideal more puma spearmen reinforce do clean up these hussars defending the, the town center so so well shipment available here for shackler to send three hussars here got another one hussar being trained behind us yes um in my Discord, I do have a standards table uploaded from basically last last week to be quite accurate. I will be updating it at the end of tonight to show you these latest games as well as other series have been played. I think um, Herbie played Sheckler, but the series um, had a few issues mid-series, which means the recorded games were not necessarily available. So uh, we, we take the word that their series was mediocre and we move on to the great series that is Sheckler Alligator here. Alligator putting pressure on that far stable. Will this one Hussar pop out? Three Hussars about to pop out from the stable, uh, from the town centre. Seven CDBs now in the town centre. A couple, couple CDBs actually fighting. Shackler's actually fighting the CDBs now. So this is a this is great. We've got a couple CDBs frontline tanking so much damage here. Just, just see how slow their HP bars are going down here from the Slingers. This is absolutely ideal with them in their Christmas hats. Moving across. Even that Puma Spearman is getting a face full of lead now from the CDBs. The CDBs on their own could just clean this army up. You don't need cavalry. You just need a bunch of angry French people. And they will do the job for you. you know, French people can get very angry. And once they are annoyed, oh, they mean business. Yes, someone's actually playing Aztec. And again, playing Aztec very well. Big batch of us. The, the CDB have killed the Spearman. And Hussar has just popped out the stable. The stable's gone down. Ah, oh, there's a couple of pu uh, Spearman right side. And that could be a massive... Um, micro game here for both players who, who which was five longest this the spearman or the cdb but the spearman the cdb in hand combat here 10 attack per punch only 80 hp these just things just not good enough one cdb going down behind here i mean more importantly the cdb not gathering means that you know the reinforcements here from shackler are non-existent as well the aztec players continue continuously uh spamming units into the town center but um yeah, the ideas here from Shackler towards the end have kind of come in and just just a little bit uh, towards the latter side. And actually, I think from me looking at this game, it makes me appreciate CDBs a little bit more. And maybe I should be including the Pioneers card into my deck more often. 65% HP is very strong, especially mixed with the Blunderbuss and Greatcoats upgrade. And um, I encourage you guys to maybe check that out in your own games, your own streams. And uh, yeah, report back to me to see how useful it works because... <laughs> these seven CD. Look how slowly this guy's going down. Still more than 200 HP. But the double batch of Puma Spearmans here is going to be tough to deal with. Nothing here for Shackler to do with it. No unit shipments. No production. He's got, he's got a stable, but uh, he won't get enough food to train a Hussar, really. And um, if I just hurry this on along a little bit. He's trying to 
trying to reveal Micro as best as he can, but the Town Centre has gone down with the Spearman R on top of the CDB. CDB trying their best to kite back, but uh, no resources being trained. He does have an outpost somewhere. That shipment's still being sent from Shetland. That really should be cancelled, but uh, maybe because it's an improvement, it doesn't matter. So these guys are up to 396 HP, but unfortunately, a little on the late side, and yes, the game has been called. Alligator taking the series uh, to 2 1. And uh, what a great series that was. I really enjoyed that. Game 2, a uh, very uh, long, long game, but uh, even the first game as a Dutch uh, main, I did enjoy it. But uh, good quality, good in even contest, and uh, both players have done well. So. Yeah, the military, that, that time where we were talking about this is the time to break out and push, to secure the hunt, secure the map, is so critical that it's worth moving your villagers as well as a meat shield to basically bolster the ranks of your military and, and double the double the military HP. That's what they really do. Is they, they tank so much on the HP, and that was a chance, but uh, unfortunately, the lack. And also, because of the Ontontons were focusing down the musketeers with double rate of fire, double attack, bonus versus heavy infantry, like the musketeers, that the crossbows, all the CDB forming that front line, or, you know, hussars, but also there's Pune Spearman nearby, uh, could have really formed that, that, just the meat shield. And the thing is, Bow Pike, both do poor, poor damage versus villagers, Pikes were low on the multiplier versus cavalry. I, I, can, I, can, I can agree if coyotes were here instead of the Puma Spearman, but I wouldn't necessarily be advocating using your CDBs in this way to defend or in that sense. But um, yeah, that was the opportunity there and then. And afterwards, it was always going to be tough behind, especially after Sheckler had to invest his resources into units to stay alive instead of growing the eco because you know, he couldn't gather anything the units were in his base. So I don't really blame him there. But um, yeah, end of this series. If you enjoyed this uh, series and this um, video, make sure you give it a like. Uh, there's a playlist being built with all the casts from this series for you to go enjoy now or at a later time. And uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well so you can see how this playlist develops and when each new video gets released. So yeah, thanks for that. And I'll see you guys in the next series.